Now, coffee is by far the most common plant that people still include on a carnivore diet. But is the coffee you're drinking ruining your results? In today's video, we're going to be exploring just this. First, I'm going to break down which defense chemicals are present in coffee and how these defense chemicals will affect us. Then, we're going to look at the four groups of people who should almost certainly avoid coffee on the carnivore diet and look at some other issues we see in coffee, such as pesticides. And finally, I'm going to give my recommendation as to whether the average person on carnivore should continue to consume coffee, as well as some bonus tips on how to make your coffee as healthy as possible. The thing that always makes me laugh about coffee is that there are so many people in the carnivore community who have somehow convinced themselves that there is one plant that's good for us. I see many people in the carnivore community say things like, well, actually, coffee drinkers have been shown to have a 14% less chance of having a stroke, and therefore, coffee is neuroprotective. However, the fact about coffee is that it is a bean, and a bean is a seed, and a seed is the most defended part of the plant, as it is the plant's offspring. Now, there is one thing with coffee that does make it less bad as say, in comparison to things like vegetables, and that is the fact that we only consume a very small amount of it. A serving of vegetables is at least 100 grams, whereas a serving of coffee is roughly 3 to 4 grams. Now this isn't to say that it's not going to affect us, however it will have a less of an effect than these other plants which we consume in much larger doses. Now coffee, because it's a plant, it is going to contain defense chemicals. Phytic acid, tannins and lectins are a good example of these. All of these are anti-nutrient properties. They bind to minerals, which inhibits their absorption. They're also going to cause inflammation to our guts and just, well, our bodies in general, as well as other defense compounds, which affect our hormones. Whenever we drink coffee, our stress hormones elevate, which indicates to us that these are present. And then, well, we have caffeine. Now, caffeine is the main reason that most people consume coffee, and it's actually a defense chemical in itself. Caffeine is created by the plant in order to fry the brains of small insects that try and eat it. Now these defense compounds are no different to any plant defense compounds in the sense that they're going to cause inflammation. And inflammation is the root cause of every disease. I don't think having a small amount of one bean every morning is going to do too much harm to you, but for some people they will notice the effects. Now let's discuss the four types of people who should not be including caffeine on their carnivore diet. The first of which are people with anxiety or mood disorders. First and foremost, like I talked about, they're inflammatory, which means they're going to damage our cells. And our entire bodies are made from cells. So when these are damaged and they're not functioning properly, it just leads to a number of issues. One thing this inflammation may do is damage our guts. Now, the gut health of humans plays a key role in how we feel. So if you are someone who's just hypersensitive to the defense compounds in coffee and it damages your gut and consequently you can't produce as many of the happy hormones that you require to feel good, for those people, coffee will be a problem. Some people, like I said, who are hypersensitive to plants need to remove every single one and coffee is no exception to that. An example of this is Michaela Peterson, the daughter of Jordan Peterson. And they affected her so badly that by the age of 20, she had to have two joints replaced. When asked if she'd rather her depression go away, or her arthritis, which was going to kill her, to go away, she said that she'd rather her anxiety go away. So she went on carnivore, removed all the plants from her diet, and yeah, her depression literally just vanished. Another factor that can contribute to coffee making you feel anxious is the stress response from coffee. Like I talked about earlier, many of our stress hormones increase when we drink coffee. And many people report that when they drink coffee, their anxiety levels increase. So if you are someone who is an anxious person or you have a mood disorder where you just don't feel happy, you do want to remove all plants. The second type of person who should remove coffee on the carnivore diet are people that have sleep issues or are always tired. You see, coffee, or caffeine more specifically, has something known as the quarter life. Now, the quarter life of caffeine is 12 hours, which essentially means when you have some caffeine, 12 hours later, a quarter of it is still in your system. Now, for some people, this number varies. Some people are what they call faster or slower metabolizers of caffeine. So for some people, this might be a bit shorter, and for others, it may be a bit longer. But as a general rule, it's 12 hours. And so essentially, what this means is that if, you have, if you've had coffee any time within the last 12 hours before you go to bed, it's going to affect the quality of your sleep. Now, even if you are someone who can drink five cups of coffee before you go to bed, it's going to affect the quality of your sleep. For humans to have optimal sleep, they need to go into something known as REM sleep, which stands for rapid eye movement. It's basically when you're sleeping and your eyes are moving up and down, still shut, rapidly. However, when we have caffeine in our system, it severely impairs our ability to get into this deep sleep. So even if you sleep for the exact same amount of time, because your sleep quality is just not the same, you're going to end up feeling more tired even despite having the same amount of sleep. 
Oh yeah, also, I'm now on Instagram, so follow me on there. I'm posting three short form videos per day that aren't on here. And for everyone who goes on my one picture I have and comments that have come from YouTube, I'll follow you back. So yeah, if you want to see more of me, head over to my Instagram. I'm sure you can see the name on screen right now, assuming I remembered to put it on the slides, which I will have. Anyway, back to regular programming. The third type of person who should look to avoid coffee on the carnivore diet are people who are having persisting digestive issues. Obviously, for many people, when you start the carnivore diet, your first couple of weeks in particular, you will have digestive issues because you're adapting. I've talked about this in other videos, which I'll link to at the end. However, for some people, coffee acts as a laxative. And the fourth and final group of people that should definitely not be consuming coffee on the carnivore diet is people with an autoimmune condition. Now, these people in particular should definitely avoid it. The root cause of autoimmune conditions, while well, technically it is unknown, but based on the fact that nearly everyone goes on the carnivore diet, well, actually, I should say, by the sounds of it, everyone that goes on the carnivore diet at least sees their autoimmune conditions improve. It's highly likely that, once again, caused by inflammation. So yeah, like I've talked about throughout this video, the compounds, the defense compounds in coffee are just going to be problematic for some people. So if you have an autoimmune condition, you definitely don't want to be including coffee. Coffee is sprayed in pesticides. Now, pesticides are quite literally just man-made chemicals, made in a lab, all these synthetic processes. Like, it's it's poison. Like, there's no other way to put it. That's what it is. And every coffee bean is sprayed in it. Now, you can get organic coffee. However, organic isn't much better. Organic means natural pesticides. Now, think about it. What, what, what does natural even mean? Everything at some point or another is natural. So yeah, it's just a complete gray area between organic pesticides and regular pesticides. And the next issue is the roasting process itself. As we know, anything seared or charred becomes carcinogenic. Doesn't matter whether it's carrots, steak, coffee. If we sear it too much, it is carcinogenic. And we can taste this. This is why we don't like burnt food. And obviously with the coffee process, there is some roasting. So if you're someone who likes a really dark charred bean like a really really strong intense one you may want to think about that i've talked about throughout the video but your stress hormones are going to also increase and another issue with coffee is that many people include some sort of dairy like milk with it and so what this does is you're just going to have extra insulin spikes which having too many of these is not ideal for us so if you are someone who's having a few coffees a day and they're all containing dairy you're just spiking your blood sugar over and over which is certainly not ideal and then finally coffee is a diuretic so at least to some degree, it will dehydrate you. And in doing so, it depletes some of your electrolytes, which, yeah, I mean, again, not ideal. In summary, no, coffee is not good for us. We all know this. However, for some people, the upsides of coffee may actually outweigh the downsides. In fact, for me personally, I still drink coffee. Like I said, I know it's not good for me, but the fact that I can have a late night, maybe I'm out or I've got some lots of study to do, and then I can wake up in the morning after not having much sleep and then take this one seemingly magical bean that just completely gets rid of all tiredness. To me, being able to do that outweighs how bad coffee is. As well as the fact that I just enjoy drinking coffee. I do know that at least to some degree it will be doing harm to me. But yeah, like I said, to me, the pros outweigh the cons. However, if someone was to say to me, Max, I'm doing carnivore, should I continue to include coffee? My answer would be no. If you don't absolutely love coffee and you don't have to worry about performing on small amount of hours of sleep like I have to do some days, then you probably don't need coffee and it probably is just a net negative. So the best type of coffee you can have is the one that doesn't exist. Don't do what I do. It's, like I said, it's better to not have it. However, if you are going to consume coffee, the best you can do is to have it black. And the reason for that is because you're not going to have all these blood sugar spikes like I talked about. But black coffee can be quite bitter and a lot of people don't like the taste. That bitterness is literally our bodies sensing the defense chemicals. So that's how we know it's toxic. But if you're someone who doesn't like it bitter, the next best option you can have is probably to have it a bulletproof coffee with butter. And then after that, cream. And then finally, the worst option you can, oh, actually second to worst option I guess you could have would be with milk. Having butter or cream is slightly better than having milk because you're just not getting that carbohydrates and the lactose that comes from milk. Now, even though milk does contain a lot less energy, because it contains these carbohydrates, it's just gonna block some of your hunger signaling and cause you to eat more food. So even though directly it has less energy in it than say butter or cream, what's gonna happen is because your hunger signaling's not quite working properly, you're gonna end up consuming more total energy. 
having the milk, then you would say the butter or the cream. You need to have a very small amount of these things because they're just super high in energy and it will stall your weight loss if you're having a considerable amount of either cream or butter. You also want to think about the type of coffee you're getting from a cafe. If you order a regular flat white or something like that, what they do is they often put like this much water in and the rest of it's milk. You know, they're basically coffee milkshakes. So you're going to be consuming a lot of dairy. It's not like the one at home where you make it with mainly water and add a little bit of milk to the top. These things are basically entirely milk. So if you're consuming a significant amount of cafe coffee, you might want to think about that too. A trick you can use to get around this is to order an Americano. Now, an Americano is the exact same thing basically as a long black, but it just sounds a little bit less sus when you order it. And then you order a side of milk, a side of hot milk to be precise. And then you know how much milk is in your coffee and you're not drinking like an absurd amount of milk. And then the absolute worst coffee you can have is those rubbish powder coffees. Now, often you'll see like these quick sachets that are like cappuccinos or, or whatever they are. But when you look at the ingredients, it's full of seed oils, stabilizers, all these chemicals. So if you're going to have a coffee, have a coffee. Even if it's just find an instant powder that is 100% coffee if you really want an instant coffee. But yeah, do not just have a look at the powders that you're buying. Anyways, that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing down below. It's completely free and it means you'll see more videos like this. On screen right now are the videos I've discussed throughout this video. And then above me is probably a video that YouTube reckons that you personally will like. Yep, it's gone through all of my videos. I don't know how they do it, some algorithm thing. And they've found the video of mine that you would like the most. So if YouTube's got that right, click that button. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.